Good day, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Standing in My Truth with Valerie M, a.k.a. Maxfield. And what is my topic today? My topic today is the abuse of the queen. Every woman's a queen. From the time they birth the children that they have, they're queens. Up until then, they're princesses. What's the moral of my story? Every so now and again, I get to hear or watch other people talk about abuse, 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 abuse. Things are coming out of the woodwork, abuse, 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 abuse. It's not an easy subject to talk about. It really isn't. You know, we... we, We as women do not want to let people know we've been violated. doesn't matter what colour you are. Violation is violation. Even just having your home robbed is a violation of your things. Whether it be on your person, it's a violation. Now... If that's the way we feel as human beings, being violated. And this is not just, I'm not talking about women, I'm talking about men too. Then why does a man think it's okay to violate a woman? And quite easily too. We live in a cycle that women, this is, we live in a cycle where we just want to be loved. Children or no children, we just want to be loved. We want to be the one that's special. We want to be the one that, you know, he devotes his whole life. Remember, men think very differently from women. I was speaking to a a woman the other day and, you know, actually on one of my podcast shows... And she said all she wanted to do was be a secretary and a mum. When I was growing up, believe it or not, God, look, do not kill me. I was young. I wanted to be a policewoman. Apart from being a, a footballer. Never wanted to be a singer. That happened just, just out of the blue. That's probably why I'm not no big singer. But that just fell into my lap and I just went with the flow. As you do. But um, no, I wanted to be a policewoman or a footballer or a football referee. And my last last choice would have been a studio engineer. All jobs that is in a man's world. Did you see what I quoted? All jobs that is known back then in a man's world. But why I say we women allow ourselves to be abused is this. We will, there's nothing wrong with us buying clothes. We'll buy clothes and, and you know, have the hairstyle and the nails and everything else. But when you peel off that facade, what's going on in the brain? What's there left to stimulate a man bar the fact that he just sees you as a sexual object? Where is the deep insight? Where's your spiritual side of you? Where, you know, where is the, just the intellect, where is it all? So basically, it's the facade that most, I'd like to think that it's not the case, but most men go for what they see outside and not what's on the what's on the inside so by the time a man comes and sees a woman who's looking good and 
you know, there's, she just looks beautiful. But his level of intellect is so low that when he meets a woman that is intelligent and she's great, but she still has low self-esteem. Mad, isn't it? A woman who's intelligent, intelligent about the worldly things and probably finance and the law and, you know, literally worldly things. But deep down inside where she's covered everything with the clothes and the nails and the Mulberry handbags and the Gucci or, you know, the latest, the, the best car, she has low self-esteem. And she probably works in a field where it is male-dominated. I'm only giving a scenario here. So she needs to play this game. This game has to be played, right? So any attention that comes to her from the male speeches is welcomed. Because, yeah, she's doing something good here. But what happens when she that, that one of those male speeches pierces that facade, that outside look, and has gone beneath the clothes and realised, oh, she's now, you know, she's now smitten. She's feeling this guy. This guy's now got it going on. So now she's saying, okay, but then not realising, because you don't see it at first. The alarm bells don't go off at first, you know. She panders to everything that's about him. It's what he likes where he wants to go, what he wants to do. You know, you don't listen to the level of the conversation, which is, it's everything is about him. Now, one third probably going into the relationship, you find out that everything you do from cooking the food, from him coming to your home, you're not going to his, he's coming to yours. And you find that now you're indoors, you're actually not going out for meals or you're not going out, you're just not doing the things that you want to do. You're finding that you're not being pampered. You don't, look, you don't need money to be pampered, you know. You can pamper yourself at home with the most, with cooking and hugs, kisses, holding hands, being playful, deep conversations. Don't bring don't tell me you need to, you've got kids you can't do that. It can be done. You've just got to want it. But remember, before you know, you've brought this guy into your life kids or no kids. You didn't stop to think what it is that you, you know what you want or you've not even sure what you want. Fair enough. But you gave him what he needed. You didn't tell him what you wanted. Okay, I'm going to strip away from that. I'm just leaving you with that with food for thought. Let's talk about the strong women then who have gone out to work. In the music industry, normal jobs, construction, the law firms, etc. And you come across a guy who you know you need to get, it. you, you want to be in that circle, you want to be about everything. And one day out of the blue, you know things that's not right, the way they talk to you, the way they carry on. It could be a night out, you've gone out, and the next thing you know, you've had a few to drink, and then you're assaulted. Or you've been in the office, and they touch you, and you're telling them, no, 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 no. But because you think if you say anything, you're a problem. So, you know, you let that ride, you let that slip. You go home, you feel uncomfortable, you start to question yourself, is it me? Did I? And then you go back, and you do the same thing over and over and over again. Before you know it, you've, you, now you're definitely losing your self-esteem. You feel like a sexual object. You didn't ask for this. What is it that you're doing? But whilst you're in it, you still can't see it. Now, you may not tell a friend. And if you do, you make sure it's a, a female friend that you tell. That female friend may not work with you and they may not understand the situation that you're in. So what advice can they give you? 
Do you go to your do you go to your line manager? Do you make a complaint? I would say majority of the women don't make a complaint and hence are abused in their place of work on a night out rate. Ex-boyfriends rape ex-girlfriends because you don't want to. You, you, how did you get into that situation? You allow them back in. You don't want them. And what did they do? They would take from you because they feel they can and they do and they did. I can only speak from my standpoint because it has happened to me. And what I found through Corona is a lot of um, systematic abuse is now coming out from a lot of people. But it's the way they're doing it. It's like, oh, let's go to the papers and blah, blah, blah. We are pride, proud, proud, proud. We, women are proud. They do not want their partners that they've got now to know they've been abused in the past. They don't want their children to know they were abused and raped in the past. Would you? But even if you say would you, how would you feel? Would you know what to do if you were abused at work or abused on the night out by people you actually know? It's not like they're a complete stranger. We're not talking about people that's been raped on the street. We're talking about people that you actually know, you work with in the industry, systematically doing it over and over and over again. It is not a joke. And I heard, um, I think his name is Funk, Funk Butcher, a couple of days ago, started, go, you know, having an interview about women. And I thought, hold on a second here. This is a guy speaking up for the women. Where are the women speaking up for themselves? Why does it take a man to speak up for us? I applaud him. But where are the other women that speaking up for themselves to say, okay, I can't name names, but yes, it's happened. It was so long ago. I can't, I, I can't prosecute them. But yes, it's happened. So that we can let other women know what to look for, how to deal with it. Hands up. Guilty. Yes, Your Honour, I'm only stepping forward now. Those things are the things I hid and accumulated that's caused part of my own, you know, anxiety. And I know that I'm not allowed, I, I'm, I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. I've lost a friend who, before she took it to, out of the blue, disappeared. And when she came back, she said, I have to tell you something. And then she told me the person that raped her and six weeks later, she was dead. Gone. She carried that for 15 years of someone that we used to go to a party with on a regular basis. It is systematic. It is amongst us. The other day there was a program in England called Small Acts and there was a guy, you know, practically trying to rape a girl outside of a, 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 of a party, which is a black community party. And, you know, there's a bit of uproar about, no, there was a lot of a backlash. And, you know, that was just not the scene. That was one of the scenes that I pick out. Uh, the rest of it, I didn't make, didn't, it, it, it was an adaptation. Someone else's view on what it was like in the 80s to go to these parties. But anyway, um, 
for what it was, it was good for what it was. But there was one thing that triggered me and for weeks I it just sat on my head and I just, it was a lot and it triggered, yeah. I was one of those people that was dragged from a party and because the guy was so coked up, he couldn't get it up and that's what saved me. Yeah, seriously. But anyway, I'm not doing here to name and shame or do anything. I'm just saying the things that we put ourselves in front of, the way we carry ourselves can give rise to a man to think it's okay to do what they do. It may not seem like it, and I'm not saying that we women are wrong. Some of it is a contribution to it. But I want to know where the voice is that who are speaking up about these atrocities within certain industries. Why are men speaking up for women? Why can I not see the voices, the women that is, these are happening to? And if you're not going to do something about it, then don't bring it up. You know? In this day and age where there's so many podcast shows, everybody, there's from blacklisted to blah, blah, and we're going to be controversial. And you're not being controversial because at the end of the day, get yourself onto a podcast and you'll see how controversial you'll become. Because even I, talking about my experiences, my daughter's got to hear this. Do you understand? I'm not taking that to my grave with me. But she knows of the, you know, I had to address it. And those, are, and it's funny because the days that I, the, 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 the time when I did get abuse, I never drank alcohol. I never drank. So there was no excuse for me to say, oh, I was drinking and blah, 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 blah. This was because... I was in a situation people thought it was okay to do what they did. And no matter and I was lucky on the first time, the second time I wasn't so lucky. You need to stand in your truth, address it, because that three percent or the ten percent of that trauma that you have hidden and not is allowing men to continue this crap within certain industries, especially through music, especially through music, because it's not something that's spoken about. It really just isn't. Taking it, taking it away from outside of music, we women are dressing up and, and going out there and, and there's nothing left to the imagination these days. I guess... I, I guess that it, social media is everyone's a model now on social media, and you know, uh, 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 from being Nubian queens to not being Nubian queens, gonna use my natural hair from from having mothball eyelashes. You name it, we do it. But what you put out there is what you get back. You want a guy to respect you and like you. Let him like your mind and and what's inside your spirituality as opposed to him just having you as a sexual object because there is going to be another woman woman that can come in and take that from you quite easily. There are women who are quite happy to know that you're with the man and will sleep with him and be the side chick. And it's funny because I've never seen, you know, as I said, you know, as I said to a friend the other day, I've never seen a Mrs. KFC before. Never Never, ever, ever seen Mrs. KFC. I've always seen KFC. So, so obviously, Mrs. KFC is not a side chick. So why do we all, why do women put themselves in that position to act like the side chick? But, hey, that's none of my business. That is so none of my business. I've had guys try to talk to me in my DMs, and when I've not reciprocated, I'm the bad guy. 
I'm the bad guy. All of a sudden, they don't talk to me. They don't, they don't liaise with me. But yet still, you had me talking to me for three, four months and we're having all kinds of conversation. At no point did I make that conversation sexual. At no point. I've never given any indication that I'm going to see you outside when Rona is finished. But I am, you know, as my, one of my ex told me, I'm too entertaining. No, I'm being kind. But being kind is what leads to so many of us women being abused. A man will come in and strip your confidence because we allow them to strip our confidence. We allow them to come, you know, take, just make, our, make us feel like we are the bad guys. We are the moany ones. We are the trouble. Have you ever been in a relationship where you don't say anything at all? Hands up. Guilty. Ka-ching. Because you just want peace. So you don't say anything. You let them get on with it. Whereas deep down inside, you are crushed. Because you're not saying anything. You're holding all that feelings in. And then when it does come out, it's like an earthquake. And he's like, whoa, what was that all about? You've lost him by then. And then the arguments start. And then you find out that, you know what? You were fighting a losing battle. Why do we not break the cycle? Is it your pride? Is your pride worth saving than watching someone else being abused by the same guys that's abused us? Or their children, or their sons? Ask yourself that. This is Valerie M. A.K.A. Maxfield on Standing In My Truth. It just had to be said. Over and out. Have a good day.